Welcome back, fellow pilots. I'm here at 4,000 feet in the clouds outside of Chicago, trying to demonstrate an ILS, or an instrument landing system, and it's proven to be a little trickier than I thought in this sim, but I will do my best. Currently, I'm setting us up for the ILS runway 27 right at O'Hare. I've got the frequency plugged in here. That is 111.75. I'm going to push that button to ident it, and let's see if I can hear it. Yeah, I can hear it kind of beeping away there. What that frequency is going to help do is guide me down to the runway, and I'm going to have to multitask between explaining what I'm doing as I'm doing it. I'm trying to get a little to the left here because I want this OBS gauge to look like a sniper scope, and that means that I'm simply on glide slope and I'm also on the localizer. That localizer is a beam straight up and down that, sh that brings us down to the runway. So if I can fly this down at about 500 feet per minute, it should guide me straight down to the runway. This is one of the hardest things to do to fly by instruments because you have to use a combination of a good instrument scan and small control inputs to guide you right down. So I always tell my students to use this heading bug basically fly that and make only small corrections on either side to help center these needles. So I know my final approach heading is 273. I know that because I looked at the approach plate that I'll put in the description of this video. And now I see that my glide slope is coming in. That's the, or the horizontal needle there. Okay, I've heard enough of this. I can turn that off. Alright, so now my goal is to make small changes to my heading and to my descent speed, or in this case my throttle, so I can fly this needle or these needles all the way down to the runway. Should be able to guide me through these clouds. Let's see how I do. You can see I need to get over to the left just a little bit, so I'm going to make a five degree heading change to my left ever so slightly. And then my eyes are kind of oscillating between this my heading indicator to my attitude indicator and then checking my descent rate, checking my airspeed, checking my turn coordinator coming back. Aha, and I locked that localizer back in. So now let's go a little bit to the left, take out those five degrees. You can see it's kind of slipping away to my right and I'm a little above glide path. So that means I'm going to pull out just a little bit of power. I want to descend at about 466 I believe. Uh, feet per minute at 90 knots. I'll just make it an even 500. Alright, so my localizer's back in. Let's get back on my heading. There's a lot to do for these instrument landing system approaches. Okay, that looks like it might have stabilized my localizer there. So I'm going to bug that heading and I'm just going to fly this heading. Oops. Fly this heading all the way, ground, all the way down until I break out hopefully. You can still see I'm a little high, so that means I have a little too much throttle in. I'll pull out very slowly about 100 RPMs, and my idea is to increase my descent rate and catch that, uh, catch that glide slope. Checking my approach plate. This approach plate says I can go down to 864 feet MSL. That's going to be my breakout altitude. Let's see how well I do about uh, 1,200 feet to go. Okay, I'm looking pretty good inside here, so I'm just going to look outside so you can see how beautiful it is outside. Wow, clouds. I would say that's pretty accurate for what the clouds look like in real life. The biggest uh, threat of from instrument flying is basically spatial disorientation, where your body's going to tell you you're facing up one way, and your instruments are going to tell you that, well, no, you're actually facing another way. And that's the real thing that you need to do when you're doing instrument flying, is you need to trust your instruments, because your body really just isn't designed, your vestibular system isn't designed to reconcile all these conflicting feelings when you're inside the clouds. You can't quite tell which way is up, or if you're turning, or if you're descending, so you need to rely on your instruments. Speaking of rely on my instruments, I'm doing a pretty good job here with my glide slope. I might be a little low, so I'll add all the power. And I'm coming back in with my localizer. You can see I'm just kind of making small changes here. Aha! 
Oh yeah, that's what it should look like when I do it just right. It should look just like a sniper scope. See, I'm a little high, so I'm taking out just a little bit of power. It's basically doing, you know, a hundred little tiny corrections and just kind of waiting and seeing what the plane is doing. I have a, uh, let's see, 1,200 feet to go, about 1,400 feet to go until my minimums. I should break out at the bottom of that. We'll see. I'm doing this video without communication from the tower because I really was struggling to uh, to get the tower to give me the clearances that I was looking for. Seems that that might be a bug at this stage in the development or the release of a uh, flight sim. Pulling my localizer back in, that means I need to get a little over to the left. Notice how I'm making just kind of like three degree uh, changes with my turn. My bank is really, really small, and I'm basically making about one or two degrees just to kind of fly this thing down. I notice that the game kind of gives a little bit of a pick up every time I fly to a new area. I wonder if it's loading terrain. Alright, here I've got 900 feet until my decision altitude. At that altitude I need to decide if I'm going to land or if I'm going to go missed approach. Right now I can kind of see the ground through the clouds and it's making me really happy. Just for fun I might make it a little more challenging. I'll do that up here. Let's see if I bring those clouds just a little lower. I don't want zero. Close enough. I just don't want to cheat. Alright, minimums today are 864 feet MSL. That means I have almost exactly 500 feet to go. I'm not going to let myself cheat. I'm not going to look outside. I'm just going to try to hand fly this down to minimums. Notice I'm not using any flaps. And I'm also... Uh, Keep my IR speed about 90 knots. In this plane, especially if you're landing at O'Hare, air traffic control would ask you to keep your airspeed up so you didn't delay other traffic ahead of you. So they might say something like maximum forward speed. Now as you get closer to the localizer and as you get closer to the glide slope um, emitters or the um, antennas, you're going to notice that it gets very, very sensitive. To combat that sensitivity, you make even smaller control inputs. And if you do, you'll be rewarded at the end with a beautiful runway at the end. Okay, I've got about 100 feet. Let's look out. That's what it looks like when you break out. You can see I've got three white lights. It means I'm a little high, not much. But I am really proud of how I flew that localizer down. That blinking you hear is the middle marker. Don't let it scare you, just as a, a little alarm basically to let you know that you have uh, found the runway or you're right at the runway threshold. Alright, in real life, you throttle back right here and glide the airplane in. We've got about two miles of runway. That's more than enough for the Skyhawk. So I'll set it on the ground, feed her alive. And welcome to O'Hare International. Okay, folks, I hope this video was helpful to you. I didn't cover the setup as much as I should have. Um, frankly, I found it pretty frustrating to get it all set up in the, set up in the sim. But uh, let me know in the comments if there's uh, another type of instrument flying video that you'd like to see. Okay, fly safely.